what I'm trying to do with this, this is a piece of glass from an old TV set. And what I got to do first is I got to get rid of this square edge here. So I'm going to use a technique called alternate flaking. But first I got to get a spot to start. So I'm going to go on the corner here. And you see the, the edge that goes there? I don't know if that, that sound picked up on the, the microphone or not, but there's a definitive crack that, uh, that you hear when you get a good hit. So what I'll do is I, I go from this side and I'll be hitting right about there and hopefully taking a flake off the bottom there. <laughs> See the flake that came off the bottom. There we go. And then you flip it over. And see another flake came off of there. This is why it's called alternate flaking because you hit it from one side and then the other and then one side and then the other. See? You got to make sure you support your material too, otherwise it'll break in half on you. Here. Okay. So I got one side done. Now if you look at that, you can see that wavy line going back and forth. That's what it looks like after you've, you've went over an edge with uh, the alternate flaking. Now we went from square edge to an edge that we can work on. And then I'll be look, looking at the low points like this point here, I'd be taking a piece off that way. And this, this point right here, I'd be taking off this way. You can't take off another piece from the low edges. You have to look for the ridges and the high edges. So what I'll try and do is I'll try and work my way around the whole thing. And with any luck, it won't break. If it breaks in half, well, we'll deal with it as it goes. The big trick with, with uh, flint napping is get used to things breaking. If you can get over stuff busting when it's halfway through, you're good. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to make a lot of rubble. See, the top of it just snapped off. So I am going to go from a different direction. So what I'm trying to do is just bring this this edge up a little bit because when you, when I keep striking down this way what it does is it lifts the edge up this way as the material comes off oh, see tip snapped off Oops. okay there we go see there's a, there's a big flake. See, something like that you could turn into a knife or an arrowhead or all sorts of stuff. See, there we go. But you can hear the, you can hear the little crack when I get off a good piece. Okay. See, that's a nice, nice clean flake. That's what's referred to as a conchoidal fracture. Uh, all nappable material will create the same same kind of fracture. It's, it's very predictable, and that's why we're able to do it. Oh, see, there's what there's what happens sometimes. So now we've got two pieces. So we'll work on this one here. Maybe we can make a little knife out of it yet. Okay. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and drive some flakes off of this way, and over here. There's a there's a thick spot right here. Now I'm going to get rid of this point right here. What I'm doing is I'm creating a platform to drive a flake off. So if I want to take it off of this ridge and drive a flake off right here, then I'm going to take this point off right here and then I'll wind up with a point that kind of sticks out on its own. You see how that does that? And then what I want to do is I'm going to braid it a little bit. What it does is get rid of the, uh, the crumbly edge because every time you hit it, what you're doing is you're creating a, uh, a shock wave. And if the edge is crumbly, then it's gonna absorb part of that shock wave and it's not gonna travel as far as you want it to. So by taking that off, most of the energy should travel down there. And with any luck, I'll be taking off a piece in this area here. Oops. Which is what I did. That, see that piece that came off of there? So now I look for another high ridge, like there's another ridge right there, okay, and there's a, uh, there's a short ridge right here that I'm, I'm going to take off. 
I know it's probably tough to see on the camera, but there's a, right here, I'm gonna drive a piece down and you can see there's a tiny little ridge right there. And we got rid of part of it. So now I'm gonna work on this tip here because I just created myself another platform to drive it the other way. You heard that crack and I drove off a piece that big. Okay, and what I'm trying to do is get rid of this whole flat edge right here. So I'm gonna keep working at it. I don't know if you can see that on camera. There's a big flat edge from the original edges. I'm, I'm wanting to do this on the whole thing. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I drove a big piece off of there. And now I should be able to take this point here and drive it back down this way. There we go. See, it drove it down that far there. You can really hear it too. Yeah, you can you can hear the crack. Yeah. That that's indicative of a, a really nice uh, hit that'll drive off a, a decent flake. So now I want to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and create a platform over on this tip and drive a flake off this way. Okay, but you can see how thin it is right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take off some of that material. Okay, I'm kind of thickening it up a little bit right there. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if I can't turn this into a knife blade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this corner. I'm going to try and bring this edge around and then bring it up like this. Okay. So I'm going to take this. There's a little ridge right here and there's a ridge right here. I'm going to take those off. Okay, and take this off here. And uh, the other thing that's important is the angle at which you hit it will determine how far that flake is driven inward. If I, if I hit it like this, it drives just tiny little short flakes off. If I want it to go really far down, then I'm gonna put it at a, a steeper angle, like this. You see the big flake that came off of that? Because the angle was different. I'm gonna take this this top piece off here. So I just gotta prepare the, the platform as it were. And I'm gonna strike it here. I'm gonna try and drive it down this way. Oh, there's a one piece there. I mis misplaced my hit a little bit so I got another another edge to drive off here. There. See, it went. You can see the long, ed, the long scar right there. Now I'm going to take off a piece back here. Oops. Now you can see. I now I did this on purpose. I didn't abrade the edge, and you can see how uh, how how kind of messed up. It didn't didn't drive off a, a long flake. Just a whole bunch of a little shards that came off of that. So now. Let's curve this up. Now what I'm doing is just taking off the, the edges real quick. I'm not looking after any looking for any big flakes. I'm just kind of doing a, a shaping. Oops, there's, there's what happens sometimes. Okay, so we're gonna wind up with a smaller piece, change of plans. 
this is this is the way it is with glass and you know a lot of other materials as well so see I got another flat edge so let's get rid of the flat edge again I got an idea I'm not gonna say what it is yet until it <laughs> in case it breaks again <laughs> I don't know if you just heard what uh, Russell over there said. He said a flint napper measures his, measures his success in tons. So what I'm actually what I'm trying to do it's starting to come together now is I'm making a teardrop point and you can see the basic basic shape here. See that's uh, it's coming together. I'm going to take this edge down here. There's a big flake come off. There we go. That's what I wanted to get rid of. Okay, this is a different different technique. This is driving flakes off using pressure instead of percussion, which you're actually hitting it and creating a shock wave. What I'm doing is I'm going to be pushing flakes off of it. Flip that over. Now, if a guy doesn't have to go out and buy tools, if you're any kind of a, a handyman, you can actually make your own, all your own tools, which is what I've done. I've just got a copper rod, a piece of antler, and I just made it fit my hand. Okay, so let's put a, a notch on the other side. So it's a it's a basic point. That's awesome. Like the, this, just uh, this is kind of what the the glass allowed me to make. You know, it's the same with uh, with other kinds of material and whatnot. Um, it's it it really depends on your your skill and what the material is going to allow you to make. Like the kind of flakes that drive off and and whatnot. But this is this is just a a basic point. You can knock it off in ten or fifteen minutes and. You know, this here could be the difference between survival and not in a in in a given bush situation. So, you know, just basic skills. This came from a big TV set. So th this is the stuff that I started out with uh, raw. You know, I I prefer not to use glass. I prefer actually the natural materials. But uh, in a pinch, glass is uh, perfectly workable. Uh, but taking it out of a TV set is a trick because the old TV tubes are a vacuum tube. So you don't want to remove it and then try and break it, it'll blow up in your face. So, you know, without getting into another video, <laughs> I, I've, I've got a way of harvesting the glass out of the TV sets with uh, very little danger to the operator, which basically means uh, breaking the glass in the case or breaking the seal in the case and then removing the glass. And I actually use a, uh, a cutter on my, uh, my angle grinder to, uh, to cut the straight edges on it. Because you, when, with glass, when you create heat and then have cold on the other side, it just creates a crack that just pops right through. And you can see right here, I didn't have to go that very far into the glass before it, uh, you know, it was like maybe a 16th or an eighth of an inch there before the whole thing decided to let go. Oh, cool. So it is fairly easy to do. It's just, you, you need to be careful doing it so you don't hurt yourself. You don't need one of these blown up in your face. Yeah, <laughs> I've been, I've only been doing it for like about, I don't know, five or six years or so. I actually saw a guy at a gun show that was a flint napper and he brought his stuff and he looked at it and basically that's the day it got put on my bucket list. It's like, okay, I got to learn how to do that. And then a fella from the States came up and was doing a course and I was there like a dirty shirt and uh, haven't stopped since. There's a, there's a hand knife. Like these are these are made out of glass. Um, I have got there's a bunch of stuff. There's just a, a little simple 
antler handled knife. Yeah. That is that is a chert from Texas. Cool. And then it's a white tailed deer antler. And then there's you know some big big points that I've got here that I, I make just for window hangers, and whatnot. So um, here's a uh, an unfinished uh, uh, teardrop point. Like it's not notched. It's just the point. You know, there's a uh, <clears throat> kind of a, a spade looking point. So, you know, you can do do all sorts of things. Another another knife blade, you know, another teardrop point. Their teardrop points are actually fairly easy to make. So, and there's another, another big point. So, you know, whatever a guy wants to do.